So you could blow a grand or even more on a shiny new iPhone or some other expensive flagship blower. Or you could save yourself a packet and snaffle one of the best mid-range mobiles instead. Because after all, the likes of Samsung, Google, Nothing and OnePlus offer phones that cost half as much as an iPhone 14. But they still boast serious game and performance. You've got gorgeous screens, premium specs, capable cameras and more brilliant features than you can waft even a generously sized stick at if that's the sort of thing you like to do. So here's a fresh updated list of the very best mid-range smartphones that I've personally tested and reviewed. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, first up, if you really fancy one of Google's flagship phones, but you can't afford that asking price, well, you can save yourself a few quid and grab the Pixel 7a instead. Despite being cheaper, it's almost exactly as good as the regular Pixel 7 flagship. Sure, those materials aren't quite as premium, but the Pixel 7a looks just as stunning as its flagship brothers, and the hand feel is truly magnificent. The brains of this mini mid-ranger is once again the Tensor G2 chipset, and yes, this does mean that the Pixel 7a gets a bit warm to the touch at times, but this phone can happily run anything you chuck at it, even games like Genshin. That dinky 6.1-inch OLED screen is another 90Hz slice of eye please in heaven, while the stereo speaker setup ain't too shabby either. And the software side, of course, is just as satisfying as always. You've got those lovely stock Android vibes, no heavy clunky launches chucked on top. You've got excellent security and privacy features, and of course, as it's Google, years of software support. Plus, you will struggle to find a better smartphone snapper at this sort of price. Between the fresh 64 meg quad bay camera sensor and the Tensor's slick image process and smarts, you will once again be treated to great looking pics, even in some pretty rough conditions. However, be warned that the Pixel 7a's battery life isn't quite as good as some of the other blowers in this best mid-range mobile roundup, so if you're rarely seen without your smartphone in hand, you might want to consider something else. Now, one of the Pixel's most impressive rivals at this sort of price is the OnePlus Nord 2T, which boosts the overall performance for any proper gaming fans out there. The OnePlus Nord 2T is powered by MediaTek's Bicep Flex and Dimensity 1300 chipset, which can absolutely blaze its way through any Android game out there. Good old Genshin is handled with nary a bead of sweat, helped along by those dedicated gaming tools. You've once again got yourself an OLED screen, this time a 6.43 inch AMOLED panel, with the added bonus of a faster 90Hz refresh rate, as well as another decent enough stereo speaker setup. So the OnePlus Nord 2T is just as great for kicking back with some Netflix action or your favourite bold tech twat. The Nord 2T's 4500 mAh battery serves up enough screen on time to make it through a pretty long intensive day even for fairly demanding users, and it also supports 80 watt fast charging when you bung a cable in it as well, which is pretty ridiculous at this sort of price point. Oxygen OS is as customizable as ever, with the guarantee of a few years of software updates to keep it fresh and secure. And while that 50 meg primary camera sensor can't quite capture pics as cleanly and as capably as the Pixel, it is still well up to the job of everyday snaps and sharp looking home movies. You can grab yourself the Nord 2T at a great price on the OnePlus UK website. It has actually been succeeded by the OnePlus Nord 3, but when it came to the official launch, OnePlus was like, do one mate to Blighty. You can actually grab one now in the UK, again from that OnePlus website. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to actually test it out yet. And also, if your budget can't quite stretch to these Nord smartphones, well, no worries. For a bit less cash, you can grab yourself a OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite. It might be cheaper, but it's still a very capable wee bugger. The design has been downgraded to plastic, but spruced up a bit with a lovely lime paint job, while the OLED screen is swapped out for a more basic LCD panel. However, those visuals are still sharp and the refresh rate is boosted to 120Hz. You once again have a stereo speaker set up, this time with added headphone jack goodness. Well, that sizeable 5000mAh capacity battery means all day play, no worries, unless you absolutely torture the living heck out of this thing, complete with nippy 67W fast charging when you do run dry. Gaming is smooth and satisfying on lighter titles like PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile, and even Genshin Impact if you keep the graphic settings low helped along again by that gaming mode, while the Snapdragon 695 chipset handles everything else just as capably. Even the 108 meg camera is a bit of a cracker, serving up good looking pics in all kinds of difficult conditions. Now another decent option for a mid-range budget is Samsung's fresh new Galaxy A54, which is a big old step up over last year's clunky and rather disappointing A53. 
For a start, that glass finish looks and feels almost as premium as the S23 flagship. With a choice of four colours, all of them awesome, if you're inclined to believe Samsung's name and scheme. Is this awesome line model actually awesome? Am I in awe right now? No, it's just rather pretty. However, I do absolutely adore the IP67 dust and water resistance, which is tricky to find at this price outside of the Pixel phone. And Sami fans will enjoy the feature-filled One UI 5 experience that's not too different from those flagship blowers. And like Google with its Pixel phone, Samsung has guaranteed several years of Android OS and security updates with the Galaxy A54, so you shouldn't have to replace it anytime soon. The 6.4-inch 120Hz Super AMOLED screen gets a thumbs up, chucking out sharp Full HD Plus images complete with Samsung's trademark colours that positively pop. Although you can opt for a more natural output if you want. It's definitely a good in for your Disney Plus and your Netflix and your crunchy roll and all that good stuff. You've even got micro SD memory card support and a bit of NFC action of course for your contactless payments, although there's no headphone jack action, boo, hiss, etc. And likewise, I found that the 5000 mAh capacity battery can keep you going all day long, no worries. Now, thankfully, despite being powered by another Samsung chipset, the Galaxy A54 serves up a much smoother everyday experience than the older A53, even coping quite well with Genshin Impact and heavier gaming titles. And Samsung has even upgraded the camera tech for this year's model, so it's a bit better in lower light. Although that lethargic shutter speed can scupper some of your shots of living subjects. Now certainly one of the more distinctive smartphones you'll find at this price range is the Nothing Phone 1, which starts from 399 quid and offers some decent specs to again rival that Google Pixel 6a. Forget the flashy lights on the back end because chances are, after piddling about with them for your first day or two, you'll basically forget they even exist. To me, that glyph lighting is just like an attention-seeking child absolutely off its tits on Haribo. But get past all that attention-seeking bollocks and you'll find you've got yourself a very capable mid-range mobile. After several updates, the various bugs and the less than impressive battery life have mostly thankfully been sorted right out. And not only can you now just about generally squeak through a full day of use on just a single charge, but you've also got support on the Nothing Phone 1 for wireless charging, which is an incredibly rare feature at this sort of price. That OLED screen is a delight like most rivals, the stereo speaker setup is decent, and this blower is nippy enough to play any game out there, Genshin Impact included. Plus, if you want an Android that looks like an iPhone, for whatever friggin' reason, this is probably about the closest you'll come with its chunky, flat-edged frame. Nothing's camera setup is gloriously streamlined, so you won't find any pointless macro nonsense or any of that other bollocks here, and it's good enough to grab good-looking pics and home movies, even in reasonably testing conditions. It's only really in proper low light where that camera stumbles a bit and the Pixel 6a starts to show its dominance, but apart from that, it's hard to really nitpick much about the Nothing phone beyond the usual complaints like the lack of a headphone jack, the lack of micro SD memory card support, yada yada. And Nothing has recently launched a more premium version of the Nothing Phone, cunningly called the Nothing Phone 2. Although a more accurate title would be the Nothing Phone Plus because it's not actually replacing the original Nothing Phone. It's just an alternative option if you've got a bit more cash to splash and you want something a bit more jazzy, a bit more beefy, a bit more all that. The Nothing Phone 2 is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which should mean smoother performance for longer. While the slightly larger battery combined with that energy efficient chipset means you'll get a wee bit longer out of every charge. You've got a bigger, brighter display, you've got an upgraded rear and front camera, and that glyph disco lighting has been redesigned with even more zones than before, plus some nifty new features. It's certainly a solid rival to the likes of the Pixel 7 and my full review is live right now. Now, another smartphone that offers a stock Android vibe at this mid-range price point is the Motorola Edge 30 Neo, the most affordable of Moto's trio of fresh edge blowers. This comes in special colours hand-picked by Motorola's latest partner Pantone, including this spangly Very Peri option. Around the other side is a gorgeous 120Hz POLED display, although the Neo serves up more basic performance than its siblings with a Snapdragon 695 run in the show. There's still enough grunt to run the latest games, albeit on lower graphics settings if they're proper memory guzzlers like Genshin Impact. And the 4000mAh capacity battery, while a little bit smaller, still offers good returns helped by the more energy efficient platform. And you've got that 68W wired charging and full wireless charging support here as well. However, the 64MB primary camera sensor does lag behind similarly priced rivals such as the Pixel 6a, so if photography is a priority for you, I'd say maybe go Google instead. 
And I also got to say, in my experience so far, that Modroller isn't quite as dependable as Google and some of its other rivals when it comes to the software updates. So if that's a big thing for you, you might be swayed elsewhere. Another one of the best stock Android mid-range phones right now is the Nokia X35 G, which just happens to be an eco-friendly blower to boot, thanks to its fully recycled aluminium chassis and mostly recycled plastic bits. Packed inside of this tree hugging body is that Snapdragon 695 chipset, which once again does the job for gaming. While the 6.43 inch OLED display and the stereo speaker setup means good times when streaming a bit of the Disney Pluses or even your uncle Spurt here on YouTube. Manufacturer HMD Global is rather generously guaranteeing three OS updates beyond Android 12, so that means you're covered all the way up to Android 15, so hopefully you won't be hoying this phone in the bin after just a year or two because it's out of date. And they're also chucking in a three-year warranty as well, so no worries if it muffs up. The 50 meg camera features built-in optical image stabilization, and it's one of the better snappers found on a Nokia smartphone, working well even in quite low light, if again not quite up to those Pixel standards. And like the Pixel 7a, this Nokia blower is fully water resistant as well. And while the 4200 mAh capacity battery can't be charged wirelessly, unlike some of its rivals in this roundup, a full charge should last you a whole day, possibly even two days if you're a bit more careful with it. Now, if you want a fancy looking blower stashed in your shorts, but you don't want to pay premium prices, well, the Honor 90 is well worth a squint. It's a proper stunner with a curvy design that's also pleasingly tough. And it's good to see Honor offering three years of software updates here as well, although admittedly not everyone will get on with that Magic OS launcher. It's a wee bit bulky at times and frankly it does occasionally get on my tits. Still, you've got loads of storage to make up for the lack of memory card support, while that 6.7 inch AMOLED screen is sharp, supremely bright and creamy smooth, topping off at 120Hz. Audio is less impressive however, as the Honor 90 only serves up a single solitary speaker. But power is provided by an accelerated Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 which can capably cope with any game you chuck at it. A massive vapour chamber helps to keep the Honor 90 nice and cool when you're smashing 10 bells out of hairy hill goits in Genshin. And you've got yourself loads of gaming tools to make your violent virtual shenanigans even more enjoyable. Despite that slender frame, Honor has somehow managed to cram a 5000 mAh capacity battery inside of the Honor 90, so I found I never ran out of juice. Certainly had plenty left in the tank when I was clambering into my PJs at night time. And you've got pretty nippy 66 watt wired recharging speeds as well, although admittedly no wireless recharging here. As for that 200 meg primary camera, well, it's not bad at all for everyday shots with decent HDR chops. Although photos can look a wee bit flat, and bright vibrant colours don't really pop the way that I really hoped they would, while softer lighting makes for quite grainy pics. If photography is a priority, you'll be better served by that pixel for sure. Now any gaming fans out there looking for a dependable device should have a proper good squint at one of my favourites, the Poco F4 GT. This absolute unit is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which can run a little bit hot, but also blaze its way through any Android title out there, helped by Poco's rather essential coolant tech. The gaming chops are further cemented by some very handy pop-up shoulder triggers, which can really take the pain out of more complex titles. Plus, the 4,700 mAh capacity battery means you can game for a good few hours on this Poco phone before you'll need to plug it back in, while the 120 watt charging support means you can power this bugger right back up to full in less time than it takes for James Corden to annoy the living piss out of me. Poco's 6.67 inch AMOLED display is a proper stunner, bold and bright with full Dolby Vision support, and compatible games can enjoy up to a 120Hz refresh rate for a fluid finish. There's also Dolby Atmos action with crisp audio spaffed out by the quad speaker arrangement. Overall cracking stuff for watching flicks as well as playing games, although not everyone will get on with the MIUI launcher that is slapped on top of all of Poco and Xiaomi smartphones. It's crammed full of crapware and also the OS updates and the security updates tend to dwindle out after just a year or two compared with the years of support that you'll get from the likes of a Samsung or a Pixel. A pair of fresher mid-range options for 2023 are the Poco F5 and Poco F5 Pro, which cost around 70 quid more. These beasts are nearly 6.7 inches in size and similar in many ways. For instance, they both sport a 64 meg camera with optical image stabilization, backed by an 8 meg ultra wide angle lens and a 2 meg macro shooter. Although the Pro can shoot 8K video, thanks to the beefier chipset that's stuffed inside. 
You got a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 running the show on the Poco F5 Pro, which was the brains of many a flagship phone just last year. So unsurprisingly, this meaty mid-ranger is a fantastic option for gamers. But that said, the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 that powers the bog-standard Poco F5 is still more than nippy enough to handle the biggest Android games. Both of these Pocos rock a 120Hz AMOLED screen, although the Pro's panel is sharper, brighter and boasts Dolby Vision support. And either way, you've got a stereo speaker setup and a generous 256 gigs of storage. The regular Poco 5 does have one upper on its more expensive sibling as well in the fact that it's actually got a headphone jack, which is an increasingly rare feature in 2023 for any mobile. You won't find one of those on the Pro, for instance. And the Pro's battery is a smidge bigger than the regular Poco F5s, but both will last you a long intensive day on a single charge, no worries at all. And you've got nippy 67 watt wired recharging, although only the Pro can be charged wirelessly. So overall, two cracking phones boasting brilliant specs for a mid-range price, as long as you don't mind all of that MIUI shenanigans. And for under 400 quid, you can also grab yourself the Poco X5 Pro, which boasts a 6.67 inch 120Hz OLED screen and 5000mAh battery. But while the camera's megapixel count has been boosted to 108 meg, that performance has been kicked down a bit to a Snapdragon 778G. That said, the X5 Pro can still handle games like Genshin Impact, Call of Duty, etc. without bursting a blood vessel, and it looks rather tasty doing so in this bright yellow jacket. Another solid mid-range choice is the Xiaomi Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus 5G. Clunky name for sure, but a decent handset boasting smooth performance thanks to the Dimensity 1080 chipset. That MediaTek brain can breeze through games of Genshin Impact on regular settings, while battery life is also rather decent. And even if you do run dry during the day for whatever reason, well, no worries, the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus 5G supports 120 watt fast charging again, which is proper mental. The massive 6.7 inch Super AMOLED screen is another stunner, supporting Dolby Vision streaming shenanigans plus 120Hz refresh. You've also got a stereo speaker arrangement, a headphone jack, all the goodies we love to see. On the software side, it is once again Xiaomi's MIUI launcher in all of its batch mental splendor, complete with those tardy rollouts. But one of the true standout features is the 200 meg main camera sensor, which can capture great looking evening shots thanks to the clever clogs pixel bin and tech. Done a full video on the 12 Pro Plus right now, and also check out my comparison with the 12 and the 12 Pro. If you want to save yourself a bit of cash and don't mind missing out on some of those clever features like the 200 meg camera sensor. And another option is the Xiaomi 12 Lite, which again is a pretty satisfying all round blower in almost every regard. Qualcomm's older Snapdragon 778G chipset provides the power here, but that still copes admirably with everything up to and including a good bit of gaming. The smaller 4300mAh battery still offers all day play without stress, and it can be refilled quickly with 67 watt charging support. And that 108 megapixel camera does its job well in everything except for more murky conditions. It may not stand out particularly in any way, but the Xiaomi 12 Lite is still a good one and worth grabbing if you do see it in a sale. And for my final mid-range smartphone recommendations right now, let's turn our attention to good old Realme. Starting with the Realme GT Master Edition, which at just over 300 quid is a bit of a bargain. This slick looking 6.4 inch blower boasts many of the same advantages as its peers, including a gorgeous Samsung Super AMOLED panel with 120Hz refresh, a proper bit of eye candy when you're streaming endless Netflix, or blasting through your favourite games all of which run beautifully courtesy of the Snapdragon 778G chipset and dedicated coolant tech. And you got full 5G support as well as Wi-Fi 6 connectivity as well, so no endless buffering when you're trying to enjoy a nice bit of tentacle hentai action. Did I say tentacle hentai action? I obviously meant streaming a good bit of classic British sitcom action on BritBox. Yeah, bit of Yurang Lord. Good stuff. The 4,300mAh battery isn't as big as some others in this roundup, but you shouldn't struggle to last a full day, while there's 65W Super Dart Charge support if you need to give it a top up. And Realme's 64M rear camera and 32M selfie shooter are pretty respectable for this price point too. One of the most recent mid-rangers to launch globally is the Realme 10 Pro Plus, and while it's not officially come to the UK just yet, I've got all of my fleshy bits crossed that this gorgeous blower does make it here soon. This 6.7 inch smartphone is ridiculously thin and light with a display that pretty much entirely fills that front end. I have experienced some slight responsiveness issues as the screen does curve around the edges so it is easy for your palm flab to intrude. 
But that's one of my only real complaints here. Besides that, the Realme 10 Pro Plus is mostly a joy to use. That 120Hz OLED screen is matched with a powerful stereo speaker setup, so movies and games look and sound fantastic. And speaking of games, MediaTek's Dimensity 1080 handles Genshin and other memory hogging titles impressively well, even on those higher graphics settings. However, that camera once again isn't as good as the Pixel 6 is, often struggling with moving subjects. It's not a bad snapper by any means, it's just not one of the better efforts in this roundup. Now if you thought, oh I like the look of some of those, but unfortunately my budget is still a bit too tight for any of these mid-range mobiles, well no worries, your Uncle Spurt has got you covered. I'm hoping to update my best smartphones under £200 and under £300 videos also in August, getting those live hopefully in the next week or two. Now, did I miss out your own favourite mid-range mobile? As I say, these are my personal picks, my favourite mid-range phones that I've personally tested and reviewed. I might have missed out your own, so definitely let us know what it is down in the comments below, unless it's the iPhone SE, because that is frankly a steaming sack of shit. In the meantime, please do plug subscribe, do that notifications bell, have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week, and I'll see you on the flip side. Cheers, love you!